Boy oh boy, a lot of you have asked me to do this review. G'day guys, or should I say g'day guys and gals. I was just looking at my analytics and I see that my female viewership is up to 5% now when I started this channel or sort of a year or two back. Whenever I'd look at those statistics, it would always be 100% male. But now, welcome aboard ladies. I will try and make the channel a bit more gender inclusive. I don't know if it wasn't already, but hey. Anyway, let's get on with it. This is the Makita DTM52, the Starlock Max Multi-Tool. It's LXT, not XGT, although I'm guessing, seen as this would have been developed at the same time as XGT, that it won't be too long before we get an XGT one. In this part of the world, it comes with one blade in the box, and that's it. You just get the tool, the blade, the manual. In some parts of the world, you might get a different blade, and I know if you're in the UK, I have seen people say that they don't get the blade. No blade at all. So, but hey, don't shoot the messenger. These blades have exactly the same color coding, exactly the same writing, and they're identical in every way to the Bosch ones, except for where it says Bosch, it happens to say, you guessed it, Makita. Surprisingly, I have never done a Makita multi-tool review before. So why not start with the best one, eh? Before we go too far though, I'll just tell you about Starlock. The original multi-tool was designed by Fine. They um, designed one donkeys years ago for using to cut casts off. If you've ever had your arm broken, your leg broken, they put a cast on. And they needed a way to cut those casts off without slicing your arm open. That's when multi-tools were invented, for that purpose. It wasn't for ages, decades later before they actually turned them into a power tool that we could all buy. Bosch seemed to popularize it the most, and Bosch came up with this system as well, the Starlock system. Bosch also came up with, in case you didn't know, the X-Lock grinding system, and they also did SDS Max and Plus and those for doing rotary hammer drills. All brilliant little things that just make your life a lot easier. Seems to be one of the things Bosch excels at. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Bosch, we're here to talk about Makita. If you have a bunch of these sort of blades, these flat ones, I think they're called OIS, that have this sort of pattern and don't have the 3D protruded Starlock pattern, then you're shit out of luck. You're not going to want to buy this tool. This won't fit. These sort of ones, they will not fit. So, if you have a ton of these and you want to keep using them, I will let you stop watching the video now because this tool is not for you. If you do want to carry on continuing to use these sort of blades, that's fine. Makita do also have these two options, the DTM50 and the DTM51. So quickly, what's the difference between these three? Well, the first difference you notice is the way that they attach the blades. The first one, the DTM50, very simple. You need an Allen key to undo the end. You have to take this screw all the way out if you want to put on one of these sort of blades. If you've got one with a cutout, you can just do it sort of halfway and then slide it in and tighten it back up. Like so. Variable speed, zero to six. This is a brushed tool, 6,000 to 20,000 oscillations per minute. The next multi-tool Makita released was the DTM51, which is much more uncomfortable to hold, is still brushed, but has a completely different system of putting your blades on. You pull this lever up, you then pull out the end, or it may drop out if you're lucky. You then put your blade on, put this back in, and then flip your lever, and it's now locked in place. This one though, lots of people hated because no light on the front because the lever goes over the front of the damn tool. Whereas the predecessor model had a light. So on the new one they got around that by sticking the handle on the side. Pretty simple. So it once again has a light on the front. Something that really bugged people. It is the sort of tool that is quite handy to have a light because you're often getting into tricky places with it. Awkward situations underneath the house, up on a roof or somewhere like that where there's not good lighting. So the light's back guys. This DTM51 is horrible to hold when compared to the new 52. This one is very comfortable. It's nicely balanced even without the battery. It feels slightly heavier on the head, so once you put the battery on, it probably be quite a nice feeling tool. 
It's got a lot of vibration dampening in it. This swivels a lot. You can feel that the whole thing's moving inside the tool. It has AVT. Damn it, I couldn't think of anything funny to say. Uh, also, uh, nah, we'll just have to go with the original. It's anti-vibration technology. These older models both run between 6,000 and 20,000 oscillations per minute, whereas the new one just goes between 10 and 20,000. Let's have a look at the features of the tool. It's LXT, of course. This is an 18 volt tool. It has a variable speed dial going from 1 to 6. Slide on off switch, very simple basic switch there on the top. And then the bit you want to know about, how you attach the blade and what blades go on there. So, it says Starlock Max, upside down, I don't know why they printed it upside down, oh wait on. There we go, Starlock Max. It also does Starlock Plus, let's have a look, it says it underneath there, Starlock, Starlock Plus, Starlock Max. I don't know every single fitting for these types of tools because there's just so many different combinations, so many different blades, so many, it's just, it's out of control actually, it's just gotten ridiculous. It would be nice to get a standardized system because it is crazy. This is about the most standard you can get. I think they call it OIS, which is probably something, something oscillating and international standard, maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but hopefully I guessed that right. That'd be good. But like I say, this tool only takes ones that look like this. It will not take ones that look like this. Or this. Or this. Or this. Or any of these. You need them to look like this. Okay, so let's put a blade on. So you first flick this up, and then it's quite a hefty flick to get it to really go over and lock in place. Like that. Clicks in place. That has released this pin in the bottom here, which you pull out. It's a separate piece, unlike, say, the, the fine ones or the Bosch ones that have the little clippy thing inside, like an X-lock grinder that grab onto the blade. With this one, unfortunately, you have this piece that can drop out, fall in the mud, drop underneath the house or whatever, and you can lose it. But that said, there's a lot less to go wrong with that. You then grab your blade, put it on your tool at whichever position you want, 30 degree increments all the way around, 360 degrees. You can even put it in a place to cut your own wrist if you wish. Drop that back in, push it in. It's basically locked in place, but to fully lock it in, you need to clip it back. It's now solid as a rock, baby. Ready to go. I think that's about all there is to it in the talking department. Next, we need to see how it works. Vibration-wise and noise-wise, this is going to be a big improvement, I think, over the other two Makita ones. No, actually, one more thing before we kick into using it. The other two have an oscillation angle, so how much they're going blah, 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 of 3.2 degrees. Ding, 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 ding. This one, you get a little bit more. You get 0.4 degree more for your buck. So, 3.6 on this model. First up, let's just see how noisy they are and how vibrate they feel. There are a few caveats to this test, which I will explain once I'm done. All of these tools are on their number six setting. The 50. <laughs> Loud as hell. The 51. And the new 52. Now you will have heard the 52 much quieter. Compared to that 51 sounds horrific when compared to the 52. But the 52 does have a bit of vibration control, but that's not the only issue that we're looking at here. So this one is a ton quieter, but it has a slow start feature. It doesn't take off instantly, it's you know, soft start. It keeps up to the same speed, so when you put a bit of pressure on it, it needs a bit more torque, it will ramp up and try and keep the cutting speed at the same level all the time. So 
the sound does change once you get into cutting with this thing. Which we are now about to do. What shall we start with? I think I might just cut a couple of nails off. Something like that with a metal cutting blade. See how she goes with that first. Well, it did that with relative ease and relatively quiet. I'm now going to do it with the predecessor model. I'll do it with the 50, the real noisy one, and we'll see how much difference it makes. I'll stick them side by side or something. Now, when it comes to cutting screws and nails and stuff with these things, don't expect too much. Multi-tools are, yeah, they're not great for heavy duty shit, okay? And there's a lot of variation in the quality of the blades. Some of them last a few seconds, some of them can go for ages, but don't try and cut through shit like these, you know? Don't try and cut through a big 14 gauge batten screw or something with one of these, because you're just gonna wear it out almost instantly. And if you push on it too hard and it's just rubbing in one place there on the blade, it's just gonna chew those teeth off super fast. If you wanna cut through something like this, use a real tool. Use an angle grinder, use a reciprocating saw, something like that. I know there's going to be guys out there that say they use these things for absolutely everything, but they're light duty at best, in my opinion. And with the horrendous costs of these blades, you do not want to be chewing them up too quick. They are super expensive for what they are, and yeah, somebody needs to bring down the price of these things. Now if you have a standard Starlock blade, like this one, you have those holes around there, like the OIS system. They will fit on the other two multi-tools that Makita make, the 51 and the 50, and also on most other multi-tools, not all of them. I know, there's just so many combinations. Noisy. Okay, weights, no battery, no blade. The 50 comes in at just over 1.4 kgs. The 51 I can feel significantly heavier. 1.63 kgs. And the new 52, 1.37. So this new one is around 30 grams lighter than the very first multi-tool but from the last one, it is 250 grams lighter, so that's quite significant. It is also shorter than the last model. So that's the 52, that's the 51, and there's the 50. 50 and the 52, about the same. This one, significantly taller. So taller and heavier, and the least comfortable to use. And it doesn't have a light. Wow, that's much faster than my last one. Up until recently, I've actually been using this Tool Pro Multi Tool, which is super light, coming in at only 890 grams with the blade on it. So that's a nice light little tool. It's very compact, very small, good for getting into small places. Not bad for the price. This one has yet another system of putting the blades on. You flick this up, you then, still tight, you see, you then turn the whole handle at the top, spin it around, and the end drops out. You then chuck it back in, you then poke it back in, like so, set your blade on whatever angle you friggin' want. If you can get it in the right place. And then you've got to wind this thing around again. Till it's tight, like so, and then flick it back over and click it into place. Kind of odd. And the DeWalt one, which I'll probably look at soon, has a lever on the bottom, so you pull the lever, then you slide this sort of blade in. Which is going to be annoying because it's going to be tricky to test them all against each other with all these different blades. And the Milwaukee system, slightly different again. And the Haikoki one has an interesting little dial thing by the blade. They're all different. Makes it very hard to compare. There's going to be some angry people in an upcoming video, I can see that. I need to get used to the extra oscillation width of this thing. It cuts way more to the side when I'm trying to get up to the corners. Bang, I keep over cutting. Uh, yeah, something to get used to, I guess. Far bigger oscillation than this thing, obviously. 
like I say, this this is actually my first ever Makita oscillating tool, multi-tool, whatever you want to call it. Those other two I've just borrowed just so I could compare them to this one for you guys. Anyway, give me a few days to go and play with this thing and do some actual real cuts with it, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, light test time. The 50. The 51. Not so good. And the 52. Good little light. Now some of you will be saying, hey Tools, why bother swapping to a Starlight? Why not just stick with the OIS? I'll have more options, it's cheaper blades. Yeah, in a way you're right. This is the OIS, the outside there, those 12 dots. That's a system that, once again, Bosch came up with. And I looked up what it was. It is the oscillating interface system, not whatever I said it was at the beginning of the video. I think I had a pretty good stab at it. I think I got close. Anywho, who really cares? And that's 12 dots are on the outside. This one is one of these El Cheapo blades. It's tried every combination they can think of sort of thing to try and get it to work, except it still won't work on a DeWalt. So why swap to this? Well, for one thing, it's a far more solid fit. These slot in, you've got that 3D, you've got multiple surfaces for it to lock against, and so it's a far more rigid fix. It doesn't vibrate within itself. If one of these blades vibrates without it being solidly affixed to the tool, you're losing momentum, you're losing the power, and the vibration is not actually going to work, and your blade's going to just stop in the bit of timber or metal or whatever you're cutting, and it's just going to vibrate on the tool, which is no good. So this helps eliminate that. Also, if you're not relying on these tiny little pins here to hold your blade on, you can make better blades, bigger blades, stronger blades that aren't going to snap these things off, because these things do snap off. I haven't snapped any off yet but I've seen plenty of these tools with one or two of these missing and once you've got a couple missing and it starts vibrating too much then it's just a snowball effect and before too long your tool is useless. So it helps with the longevity of the tool but also these blades like I say there's a few more options because they can make them a lot longer. They make them up to another inch longer than this that I've seen. I tried to get one the other day but couldn't find any available. None that I could get quick enough for this video that's for sure. So longer, stronger, better blades. That's one thing. They'll last longer, they'll do the job more effectively, and that is a very important thing. Of course, time is money and all that, so you get a more reliable system, effectively. But one thing that's annoyed me already, when I went to use it yesterday, sometimes you need to get in certain places, and the size of the tool is important for that. And I used to flip the blades a lot on the other one. With one of these older two Makitas, you can put the blade on like that, which can get you that nice flush cut, but sometimes, you need to put them up the other way and it gives you a bit more option. That annoys me about Starlock. And the other thing, people use these for getting in tight places, right? That's what a lot of people are using them for. When you compare it to the 50, you can see there's quite a lot of difference there. Width-wise, it's not showing all that well on the camera. It is much narrower, this old one. It, so this is going to be able to get you into a much tighter space inside a wall and that sort of thing than this one, which is much bulkier. One of the reasons I think this is bulkier is because it has the motor here, I think, and then the gearbox there. It's a separate sort of system, which helps dampen the vibration, I think, something along those lines. 
I'm not going to pull them all apart to check, not today anyway. Yeah, yeah, one day it'll probably happen, you know what I'm like. Three o'clock one morning I'll be like wide awake, laying in bed thinking, I wonder if... And then down to the garage I'll go. around like a bastard. Well, the material did. Tool feels fun. We melted. So what do I think about it? Is it any good? You'll have to forgive my voice a little bit, my throat and my nose is all going to whack on me. It's a cool tool, it's a huge improvement from what I have been using, the Tool Pro. Is it worth upgrading to this if you've already got one of these other two? Well, that's kind of up to you, not me, but if you want to use the Starlock blades, then of course this is the tool to get. They're stronger, they'll give you that bit more depth of cut. There'll probably be better options available, certainly in the future, than there is currently with the standard OIS system. But if you need to slide down inside walls, well, you can't beat the original one, really. That's so narrow and good for getting inside tight little gaps. And I actually prefer this one to the 51. This is the 51, the last model, and I don't like it. it just doesn't feel right to me. I much prefer this original one. It's, it's annoying having to undo that, that's for sure. But this one's just... I don't know, just doesn't feel nice to hold. It's a weird shape. I don't know what this square flat bit is on each side, but I personally just don't think this one feels very nice in the hand. So yeah, I'm going to be sticking with this one, that's for sure. You'll see it in plenty more videos to come, no doubt. We'll hopefully do a comparison video, like I said earlier, where you'll get to see me use a few more different blades and stuff. We'll see what we can get. It's going to be tricky because of all the different systems. But thanks for watching. There's something else there in the background, which we'll do a review of at some point. Very cool tool. But thanks for watching guys, that's the Starlock Max, and girl, sorry, that's the Starlock Max DTM-52, not available in the States yet. In the States, what'll it be called? It'll be the XMT-03, that's that I guess, I'm not sure what the other, the other ones were presumably 1 and 2, so XMT-03. I think this one will likely make it into my Tools of the Year video. Do I do a Tools of the Year video? Don't think I do. Well, maybe I'll do one, eh? The top Makita tools of 2021. <coughs> Damn it. Speaking of cool tools, if you didn't see my last video, check that out. It's this 125mm cute little black. Front comes off. 125mm, I think I might have already said that. Makita 40 volt max circular saw XGT, blah blah. Okay, thanks. See ya. I'm out of here. Everything's falling down.